and welcome to my four mechanical keyboard shout out quick review I'm just basically going to run through some of these basic features of these keyboards uh, I have a, a available full review on the Gigabyte Osmium uh, which is pictured right here the Logitech G710 Plus the Ducky DK9008 G2 uh, with the red MX Cherry keys and the Cooler Master CM Storm Trigger uh, the trigger uses the brown MX Cherry keys. As I mentioned, the Ducky uses the red MX Cherry keys. The G710 Plus uses the brown. And the Osmium uses the MX Cherry reds. Now, what is the difference between these four keyboards in terms of the sound? I'm going to go straight right to it right now. Uh, as, as far as the sound is concerned, uh, I'm going to do a test by test and going back and forth so you can have a pretty good idea what they sound like. Starting off with the reds. Brown, reds again, and brown. Now what you may have noticed while listening to that clip is the Logitech Brown cherries sound different than the uh, Cooler Master Browns. And the reason for that is because Logitech included small O-rings, uh, the rubber O-rings, underneath the keys. Uh, those dampen some of the sound, where the CM trigger does not. So uh, if you listen closely to it, uh, the Brown and the CM trigger resembles more to the Ducky than it does to the other Brown. Listen up. All these keyboards have a different shape and different length. So if you're one of those uh, gamers or uh, typists who is concerned with desk space, I obviously am not, but if you are, uh, starting off with the CM's trigger, the length is 18 inches and 3 quarters. The ducky, seeming relatively short in this picture, is about 17 and a quarter. The Logitech G710 is the widest of the four, measuring almost 20 inches long. And the Osmium, looking like it is wide, but actually it's not, it's slightly a little bit over the Ducky's length, which is 17 and a half inches in length. Now, as far as these keyboards uh, construction and quality, uh, the Gigabyte Osmium is uh, the heaviest of the bunch. Uh, I don't have the uh, I don't have a scale on me, uh, but if I remember correctly, it is uh, going by numbers uh, that's listed on the website. Uh, it's maybe three and a half, nearly four pounds. Uh, the Logitech is the second heaviest. Uh, the Ducky is the third, and the CM Storm Trigger is the uh, the lightest uh, of the bunch in terms of how they feel but the uh, the, the, the Osmium definitely is uh, uh, feels like a tank when you pick it up and so does the build uh, build quality and the construction uh, it has a mate finish so it has a non sticky uh, non fingerprint stick material uh, the Logitech uses a shinier material especially inside of the keyboard and somewhat uh, shiny but not qu as quite as the one uh, the the black trim over here. Uh, it's a nice looking finish. Uh, I I just don't 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 know how I feel about the uh, the macros being on the side here. Some people love that fact. If you play uh, a lot of MMOs and stuff like that, I actually prefer the the top macros uh, because sometimes I end up hitting these macros on the side if uh, I'm playing because I have a large hand. 
Uh, the ducky has a very simple form. Uh, it resembles some of the uh, other uh, basic forms like the uh, Philco. Uh, speaking of Philco, uh, CoStar did uh, build the OEM board for the CM trigger. So if you are one of those people that is hung up on quality and they swear by Philco models and CoStar, this board is built by CoStar. And the trigger obviously has an unusual uh, design here. Uh, I think it looks nice. It's a nice looking keyboard. I think uh, it has this indention here, um, which is not flat. And it's a nice looking keyboard and it has the macros also on the side here. Uh, the duckies that does not have macros. Uh, the 710 has 6 and the Gigabyte Osmium has 5. Now if you're asking, why would you spend $100 on a keyboard? Well the thing is, I used to ask the same question until I actually got my hands on a few mechanical keyboards. And since I've owned several different ones, I just cannot go back to the regular membrane keyboard. They just feel great. They're great to type on, great to game on. Uh, if somebody says, hey, why would you, why would you want to spend a hundred dollars on a keyboard or more? Well, you know, you just, you just have to get your hands on one and play with it for several days. Uh, you may not like it, uh, but I think most people that end up playing on a mechanical keyboard or using it for several days, they end up loving it. Uh, now with the uh, Gigabyte Osmium, uh, you can find this either locally, like places like Micro Center or uh, Fry's Electronics or Newegg.com. Uh, the price for these, uh, on this one I, I paid $124.99. Uh, the Logitech G710 Plus, uh, in store it's quite expensive. It runs about $160, $159. Um, I got it off a Newegg uh, a website for $124. The, the Ducky uh, DK9008 can be had between $99 and $130. Uh, I got this one from Micro Center. It was $129. Uh, the CM Storm, uh, you know, it varies. Uh, they're priced about $109 usually. Uh, sometimes you get good deals on it and you can find it for like $79, $89. I've seen it as low as $69, $99 on the Cooler Master own website. So they're... Uh, it's the cheapest one of the bunch, um, but relatively speaking, it comes with a lot of features, um, which I'm going to go over some of those right now. But it's a it's a good keyboard for the price. It's just uh, I do want to mention that when I got this keyboard, uh, I noticed there was a, it was an issue with the keyboard immediately, which is that the enter and the plus sign, like right here, as you can see, the plus sign is actually sticking. It's not going back up. It sometimes ends up sticking down. And it sounds also different than some of the other keys, like the, the arrow key. And so does the uh, enter on the keyboard itself over here. But this key does stick. And so does this one and this one. So I have to take this back. Uh, just be aware that um, you know some people have noticed that. Uh, they also notice the fact that the key, uh, the cable, the USB, actually runs to the. Uh, I apologize for that shaking. Uh, the mini USB port is here, so it's located in the back. So actually, that can be unplugged, unplugged, and also it has a five volt uh, DC adapter. Uh, one quick note on this, uh, you don't have to get one of those uh, that you plug in into the wall, you can get one that has a USB to a uh, DC 5 volt, uh, just run it off the computer. Um, it's actually the preferred method and it's going to be per perfectly fine because it's the, the voltage on the USB is uh, uh, the maximum and this is exactly what the CM Storm uses. Uh, as far as the keyboard layout and the, uh, the lighting, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how what it looks like. Uh, by the way, to uh, to enter the um, the light function, you have to hit uh, you have to hold the CM Storm logo and hit uh, some of these buttons right here, like the mode. Uh, let me turn off the light so I can show you. Okay, so this is one of the features which has the macros, the WAST, and the arrow key on. If you hold the CM button and hit mode, 
it'll cycle it. Uh, this one actually pulsates slightly to get a little bit brighter and a little bit dimmer. You can turn it off. You can also turn down and turn it up using these keys. And it has some of the secondary media keys over here uh, using the same um, same functionality holding this key. On the ducky, it's a plain keyboard. It's a good quality keyboard. A lot of people like it. Um, the only thing that you can turn on on this keyboard as far as the LEDs are these keys. Uh, these red caps uh, are actually found inside a package. Uh, they don't come like this. They actually come with the regular black keycap so you can change that out and put these in here and get a little bit of nice little fancy design but that's the only thing that lights up uh, minus the caps lock and these two uh, they're quite bright I really don't like uh, that they're you know this bright but you know it's it's nice it's nice to have uh, so if you're one of those people that likes uh, a full LED backlit keyboard this is not for you uh, this is probably for you this is the, the G7 10 plus has white only uh, the CM Storm Trigger also has only red, uh, so does the Osmium, also only has the blue. Uh, the white LED looks uh, looks nice, uh, it has different buttons here that you can uh, press and you can dim it, leaving only the was the arrow keys up, and those are controlled separately with this key right here. You can also dim those and turn them off. Any number of combinations. So those are the features on the, of that. And the Osmium, um, it's fairly simple. It has a volume rocker and an LED rocker right here. Pushing down the LED rocker turns off the LED, and you can turn it on. It's quite easy. Uh, no pulsation. Uh, the logo does pulsate here. This is the macro manager, uh, which changes profiles on the macro keys. You can set that up using the software to make it uh, solid or make it pulsate, uh, but I believe you cannot turn that off, the light. So having said that, let's go ahead and turn the brightness off on all of these, uh, show you what they look like. Brightest, and turn off the light. Now also these keys have uh, what they call a key rollover. Uh, if you are not familiar with what that is, it's basically when you press uh, uh, you know, a few buttons, a key cap simultaneously, how they register uh, without delay. So if you, you know, how many can you register, uh, how many can you press, uh, you know, and how many will the keyboard or the computer register. So on the, on the CM Storm Trigger, uh, it uses a 6K RO, that means you can only push uh, 6 keys at once. Um, if you push anything past that, it won't register, unless you let go of the first one and the next one will register. So it's the 6 on this one. The Ducky um, has a full NK RO capability, so you can press as many buttons as you want, it will register all of them. Uh, this keyboard also can be used with a PS2 adapter. Uh, which incidentally on the package it said that it came with one but it didn't and with the G710 it has a 26 key rollover capability and on the Osmium it has a 64 key of rollover capability. The Gigabyte Osmium is the only keyboard out of the four that uses a uh, USB uh, 3.0 port and a USB 2.0 port located in the back of the keyboard also, it has a uh, mic and a headset uh, plug on the side. It is also the only one out of these four that has that. The, the Logitech G710 Plus uh, does, however, uh, as a bonus, have individual ma uh, dedicated media keys. Uh, Non-mechanical, I believe. They just feel mushy, so I assume that they're not mechanical. Um, where the uh, Gigabyte does not have individual media keys. However, uh, I just wanted to point out that you can use the Ghost software that you can download off the website and program the G1 through 5 as uh, media keys. And also what the Logitech has is 
a volume rocker and also a mute button here and the Gigabyte Osmium also has an LED uh, rocker and a volume rocker as I mentioned before. Uh, the Ducky only has the secondary uh, function media keys um, which you can use by pushing down the Ducky button and uh, hitting these keys. Uh, the CM Storm Trigger also has secondary uh, media keys and some other functions accessible to this. Uh, this keyboard also uses um, only one mini USB cable uh, that you run to the PC. However, it does have two outputs, USB 2.0 outputs located in the back of uh, the, 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 the keyboard. So it uses uh, one USB and gives you two so you don't lose anything. Where the Gigabyte and the uh, Logitech actually they require two, uh, one for the keyboard and one pass through. Um, the Ducky also uses a uh, small USB mini uh, to be required to be plugged into the keyboard so you can unplug that and carry the keyboard with you. Uh, the G710 Plus has a hardwired cable, um, non-braided, uh, but the cable does seem sturdy. And the Gigabyte Osmium has a braided cable uh, and it's uh, quite, quite sturdy. I mean, it's really, really thick. And also, I failed to mention that the CM Storm Trigger also has a braided cable. So, but they all be seemed uh, they all seem to be good quality keyboards. I highly recommend any of these. Um, if you prefer some plain, you know, looking keyboards, a uh, Ducky is for you. It's quite sturdy. Feels great to type on. Um, it's a Cherry MX Red, like I mentioned. Uh, this is a Cherry MX Brown. Uh, Ch Cherry MX Brown also and Cherry MX Red. Uh, me personally I prefer the Osmium because it has uh, quite a few features it feels like it's the uh, best uh, uh, build quality out of the bunch. Uh, people have taken the keyboard apart and they, uh, they, they, they said that uh, it's, it's built uh, fairly well it has a good uh, PCB underneath. Uh, the Ducky seem to have been fairly reliable. Uh, some people have complained about the LEDs going out in the G10 uh, faster than they, you know, they should be, uh, which is also always a concern if you buy LED illuminated keyboard, that the LED is the first thing probably that's going to go bad. And as I mentioned, some of the issues with the sticky keys on this one. But it's, it's, a, it's a good keyboard. It's built, built by a CoStar, um, the OEM builder for Philco. But, but all in all, um, just wanted to quickly bring up the fact that the uh, Osmium has a two-year warranty, a uh, one-year warranty on a G710. Uh, uh, one year warranty on a Ducky and a two year warranty on the CM Storm. So uh, pick your choice. I like all of these keyboards. The brown and the reds. MX Cherry keys uh, feel great. Um, the Just keep in mind that these come with the uh, rubber O-rings underneath the keys. So they sound dampened. Uh, it, it, it's probably the quietest out of the bunch. Uh, with the uh, Osmium being the loudest. Simply because you're bottoming out while hitting the keys. So that's it for this uh, edition of the of my quick review. Um, thanks for watching. Uh, and leave your comments if you have any questions.